this scenario assumes the client has at least two static IPs. One we're going to use for the server and one we're going to reach this router with from the outside world. And because we want to reach the router from the outside world, it has to be configured to receive uh, a static IP and be configured for that. So to start things off, we are going to use this safety pin in that reset button, hold it in. You see that blinking Ethernet 2? That's normal. It's going to stop blinking, go solid, and then eventually it will turn off, okay? At that point, we've got a device that has been completely reset, and we will pull out this guy here and allow the machine to reboot. I will tell you from experience that after you've done that, it takes about two minutes for this fellow to be completely rebooted. You don't need to power it off. I've just done this so that I know it, I know it works. Using Windows 10, I'm gonna right click on this Ethernet, open network and internet settings, and click on our Ethernet over here, and then choose change adapter settings over here. And that'll give us our adapters. We're gonna right click on the Ethernet which is that yellow cord you saw feeding us back there. Choose Properties. Double click on the IPv4. And insert an address that this edge router is going to recognize uh, from, from the factory out of the box, which is 192.168.1. And we could give it any, ad, any uh, last number we would like. I'm going to give it the IP of 100, but it does have to be on the one subnet. And we will OK that. OK that. Minimize this. And close that. OK. So now when we open a browser and we write and we click in this area and we type in the IP address of the router, the gateway actually, you'll see we do get an address. Um, because it's uh, using HTTPS, it throws this error. Just click proceed, and you'll get to the edge router. And the default username and password for that is UBNT on both counts. That's the first phase, getting into the device. We're going to choose no to the basic setup. And this uh, process procedure will differ depending on the client scenario, but in this case, we are assuming they have two static IPs. So we're gonna choose Wizards, and then we're gonna come over here to the WAN plus two LAN two. And this is where you will configure the client's static IP. We are assuming now that you are on the premises. We're gonna choose static IP. All right, I've got the client's IP information in there. We have there. Now, this is the static IP that we're going to use for accessing the router. This is not the static IP we're going to use to access the server. We've got two different things going on here. Uh, and of course, the, I, the gateway and the DNS server being used, all that's supplied by the ISP, uh, 28 being the net mask as described over here. And that also will be available to you from the ISP. We're going to uh, enable the default firewall, enable the default IPv6 firewall, and now we're gonna come down to LAN port ETH1. Now here, uh, this is, now we're talking about this uh, second port right here, ETH1. Well, where the static on e ETH0 is incoming, this is outgoing. Both of these are gonna be used for outgoing networks to supply the business. So we're going to, uh, in the case of server matter, all of our um, networks are built on a subnet of 0.89. And now we're going to come down to the second optional. And we're going to configure that as 0 0.1 in all cases um, because that's a worldwide typical network. We want to give clients that option just in case they're uh, comfortable with that. And we're going to also create a new admin user which uh, we'll call router matter.
doing this with one hand while I film it. Okay, and we'll apply that. And we'll apply that. And we will furthermore reboot and finally say, yes, I'm sure. They want to make sure, I'm sure, I'm sure. Okay, so a couple things need to happen now um, so that you don't get surprised. First of all, while we're waiting for the router to reboot, and that's going to take a couple minutes, we're going to, uh, we've minimized our adapters. We need to get rid of what we hard-coded in there before. So we're going to go down to properties, get rid of uh, this IPv4 fixed uh, IP address, because now we're going to get our IP from uh, the router directly. Okay, that. Okay, that. We can close that. All right. Now, we still won't have any internet, and the reason we won't have any internet is because right now we've got the incoming cable, which was previously being used for outgoing while we were setting up the router. So we're going to take that out of zero, and use the other hand here so you can see what's going on, and place that into number one. All right, and this guy right here is the static that I've, been, I've had laying in wait. We're going to go ahead and put that in the first one. So now we're going to be receiving our static from the ISP. We're going to be sending, this is the .81 um, subnet that we're going to be using for our internal business network. And we're not going to use ETH2. That's for future use should they choose. Now, you're not going to really know when the router is booted by looking at it. Unfortunately, it doesn't give you any confirmation on that. But we can go here and uh, see if we get an IP address from ETH1 by just running uh, an IP config here. Okay, so I just got that address. A minute ago, I tried this and I did not get one. So I know I am getting an IP address directly from the router. And I'm just going to try to ping the outside world. nothing so we need to take a closer look at this okay so i didn't have any internet and i need to figure out why so i'm going to go ahead and log into the device but this time i'm going to use my subnet my internal network instead of the 1.1 since i changed all that that's going to be the new way to reach the device and we're going to do it from the eth1 port since that's all configured and um, i'm going to check a few settings within the edge router and we're going to start with the system area down here and see what we got okay that looks good all right that's definitely wrong so i entered the wrong address for my gateway it should be 126 yeah let's go ahead and save that life is in the details Alright, now you notice as soon as I did that, I got a clean bill of health on that Ethernet port. It went from yellow to black, and now I expect to be able to get on the internet. Voila. So that's what we need to do at the client location with their static IP. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.